Our scripture reading this morning continues in the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. 1 John, way back by Revelation, the first of three letters. Chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. Here begins that reading. Great weight. It's actually John 3, 16, if we want to get right down to it. <laughs> this is how we know love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. But if a person has material possession and sees a brother or sister in need, and that person doesn't care, how can the love of God remain in him? Little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with action and truth. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts in God's presence. Even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Dear friends, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence in relationship to God. We receive whatever we ask from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love each other as he commanded us. The person who keeps his commandments remains in God, and God remains in him. And this is how we know that he remains in us, because of the spirit that he has given to us. This is the written word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't know if you noticed, uh, the title of my sermon is The Indwelling. And I don't know if you noticed, but it uh, seems like we had to get to the very end of our scripture passage to get to something that might uh, resemble anything that had to do with the indwelling, which is what I have titled my sermon. But that's a good thing because sometimes we never get to what I title my sermon. So, uh, we, and we see how this happens when the author of 1 John says, the person who keeps his commandments remains in God and God remains in him. And this is how we know he remains in us, because the spirit that he has given us. I like that statement because it is packed with good things. Any of us who keep his, that is God's, or Jesus's, or God's through Jesus, commandments, remains in God, and God remains in us. A wondrous double indwelling. What more could we ask for than for that to happen to us? Not much, except that it's really not about us. Yes, of course, I think that God desires this to happen, this relationship to be between us, but not just for our sakes, but so that we can share this with others and further God's kingdom. This is also telling us that the way this all works is that it is the Holy Spirit that is actually in us. And God gave us the Holy Spirit through Jesus, the only one of the Holy Trinity that wasn't mentioned in that verse. But he's in there. For I think that the commandments from God that are mentioned actually come to us when Jesus himself gave that very special one to us and the other disciples just before he was crucified. And this occurred in the Gospel of John in the 15th chapter, chapter, which sounds very similar to this part of John's first letter. Jesus is talking to the disciples, assuring us that we will be okay when he is gone. Jesus says, As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love, indwelling. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, indwelling, 
just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. More indwelling. This is very similar to what we heard in our passage, isn't it? And I think right here is a good place to talk just for a moment about the gospel of John and the letters from John. When we read this from the gospel of John and also our passage from the first letter, we can be led to believe that the same writer or writers wrote them both. But of course, about this, there is some controversy. But here we are in the midst of one of the major thoughts on this. And that is that if it were not the same person, that being the John the Apostle, then it was at least a member or members of John's Jesus-following community. And in that, it is believed that the letters were written several years later than the gospel. The gospel supposedly written around 70 CE or AD, and then the letters uh, possibly 10 years later. Anyway, with these two sets of passages, we can sure see the similarities. So, back to the commandments. Jesus speaks about his commandments, more than one, in John's gospel. And many of us are aware of at least the one, that is, Jesus says, I want you to love each other just as I have loved you. That's, that's a lot. And it is also referred to, that particular commandment is referred to in our passage today. As far as another or more commandments go, I think we could go with that next line from the gospel which says, also mentioned in our passage today, no one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. And then the clarification in the next few lines, you are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because they, servants don't know what the master is doing. Instead, I call you friends. Because everything I heard from the Father, I have made known to you. I am convinced that we are all closer to God than we imagine more than I once thought for sure. And I believe that Jesus is telling us this, this very thing when he talks about us as being friends and how he will abide or dwell in us if we abide or dwell in him. What an amazing invitation he is offering us. Jesus, I think, is trying so hard to tell the disciples, to tell us, to tell humanity how much he cares for us, how much God, how much Jesus, the Holy Spirit cares for us. God so loves and loves us so much that God came from the holy realm and became human like us, lived among us, and died before us. But Jesus was not just human, but God and fully both so death could not keep him bound to this earth. So Jesus ascended back to the holy realm as the Christ. Okay, so in the first letter of John, the author says that the way we experience love, the level of love we strive for is the love that Jesus has for us, his friends. Love is the foundation of all of this. Love is woven into it all. And love cannot be contained even in the precious words from Scripture. Love, God's love, through Jesus and the Holy Spirit is within us. And indwelling is a great way to put it because I believe it permeates skin and soul. Today's passage states that our hearts, our consciousnesses may betray us and try to convince us to do something contrary to God's will. I heard the breath of life sing about this very thing. I was so pleased to hear that. But even if that happens, even if our hearts lead us 
somewhere contrary to God's will. God sees what is going on. God sees all that is going on and stays with us through those times when we convince ourselves that we know better than God what should happen in our lives and in the happenings of the world. And dear ones, when we don't allow our hearts or consciences to condemn us, then we remain in God's intentional care for us and we have a confidence in relationship to God. I believe another way to put this would be we would be in righteousness with God. We would be in a personal, loving relationship with God. And I hope we don't get hung up, and it's in, in the reading today, I hope we don't get hung up on that word confidence, thinking that is something that we express in such a way that it suggests or shouts to others that we, have, that we may have more on the ball than they do. I prefer the Living Bible's translation of that verse, which says, But dearly loved friends, if our consciousness, consciousnesses <laughs> are clear, we can come to the Lord with perfect assurance and trust. There we go. Much better, I think. Occasionally, when I'm in the preparation of a sermon, a phrase or an idea from seminary will come and I'll think, that would be good for this. And this is one of those times. And I have mentioned this before. The word is orthopraxy. <laughs> exactly what I was talking to the kids about. And if you like to play around with etymology, you can probably figure it out. So we know the word orthodoxy means the correct teaching or doctrine. Well, then orthopraxy means the correct practice. And in Christianity, it means how a believer acts in relation to how or what they believe. Walking the walk, walking, talking, walking, talking the walk. Love in action. This too is mentioned in our passage. Little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with action and truth. In this, it, it, it actually goes beyond orthopraxy because we are talking about love. Or maybe orthopraxy still works since we have been considering this in a Christian sense. And in spite of all the sludge and dirt that the word Christian has been dragged through, maybe we still consider it to mean followers of Christ who are capable of great love for God and for our neighbors. I invite you to remember, to think of instances of love in action that you have witnessed read about, or maybe even performed yourself. I will close this morning with a simple story of this kind of love. Watchman Ni, who was a Chinese evangelist, tells of a Christian that he once knew in China. This man was a rice farmer, and his fields lay on a mountain. Every day he pumped water into the paddies of new rice. And every morning he would return to find that his unbelieving neighbor who lived down the hill had opened the dikes surrounding the Christian's field to let the water run into his own. <laughs> and for a while, the Christian ignored this injustice, but at last he became desperate. What should he do? His own rice would die if this continued. How long could this go on? Well, he and his Christian friends met and they prayed and they came up with, with this solution. The next day, the Christian farmer rose early in the morning and first filled his neighbor's field and then he filled his own. Watchman Nee tells how the neighbor became a Christian his unbelief overcome by a genuine demonstration 
of a Christian's love for others. Amen. In a moment, we'll be standing to sing our last hymn this morning. As we prepare to do that, I would like anyone here that would like to join our church or out there, if you would like to join our church, uh, it can be done uh, to get in touch with me and we'll make arrangements for that to happen. Or if you would just like to speak to me or other leaders of the church, please let me know and we can make that happen. So if you would please stand as we sing. now let us prepare for our benediction this morning. Let us pray. Dear God, as we leave this place, allow us to be restored to wholeness within and without through the presence and power of the indwelling Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. I love you all. Thank you all out there. I love you too. <laughs>